Church of Scientology fosters a culture of blame, pointing the finger. Every single evaluation has a who. Somebody is lurking within the C organization to destroy and harm Scientology. Now, this culture of blame is a way of pointing the finger to clobber someone. That's just, that's just the culture. In the RPF, you have a buddy, a twin. And the, tw the buddy system is one is responsible for the twin and the twin is responsible for you. You have to get each other through the program, you co-audit, you do the counseling together, but you also watch each other. You're not allowed to surface on the street and walk in case you flee. So your twin is responsible to see you don't flee and you vice versa. Well, guess what? People do flee the RPF. And the twin, the one who didn't flee, gets slaughtered because he is to blame for his twin blowing. One of the first accusations is you must have been dead in the head. You must have been brain dead that you didn't observe the indicators before the blow. People look suspicious. People look with holy secrets. And you didn't see that? And you let this blow occur? You! You are responsible that so-and-so fled the sea oak. When there are catastrophic down statistics, meaning nobody's going into the churches. It's not because of draconian things they have done to scare off people wanting to sign up as staff. It's because the poor bedraggled staff there are holding down the statistics and wantonly trying to destroy Scientology. It's a finger of pointing blame. When somebody waltzes in the door for counseling and doesn't really make any significant win or gain, there's, there's a whole slew of people that do not, that voice that didn't do anything for them. They're labeled immediately. They're labeled NCG, no case gain. No case gain is smelly and odorous because Hubbard has said that only suppressive persons make no case gain. Therefore, you're one step away from being an antisocial personality if you don't make case gain. Now, there could be a million reasons why you didn't make case gain. Let me give you an example. If you walked in the door to say, I got a bad knee, I've had five surgeries, and you took my money and you claimed that I, you could do things for my knee. The church doesn't look at the fact that they didn't, they ignored your pleas to handle the knee. And they were handling the mother-in-law and the, and the delinquent teenager who totaled the car and blah, blah, blah. And then the guy, 50 hours later, says, but my knee is still not handled. NCG. The label is on. He's no case game. He won't even write a success story for us. Do you see how the blame for not getting the result the church determines you should get goes on you. You paid the money. You're paying $500 to $800 an hour for this. 
If you then say, oh, but, but I don't really feel I got anywhere. NCG, the blame is pointed at you. Now, gets a little worse than this. The blame is now goes wider. Miscavige implemented something I dubbed blob punishment. What is a blob? It means if one person screwed up, let's say they screwed up in sinning, the entire unit is going to get the punishment. The blob is to blame. When they had those mudslides at Inpace, a lot of Inpace people wrote, <laughs> the whole of gold, no more annual leave, no more day off, sleep deprivation, no pay. For an act of God? Incredible rain and a mudslide? But the point is that whole units get the penalty of one person if they did do something wrong, and even that's questionable, but if they did, it's not even just pointing the finger at that one person. It's the entire blob. Oh, you know. I was summoned to flag on a bogus knowledge report written on me. The person who wrote it greatly, greatly apologized. I was summoned to flag, and I $50,000 was spent on sitting me down to get my crimes. I swore I would never go back, and I never did. But to give you an illustration on the culture of blame, the director of processing, the person in charge to get you in session for counseling, I threatened him that I was leaving. I threatened. This was just going on and on. It was insanity. It wasn't going anywhere. And he said, Karen, Karen, you're, you're a veteran at this. He said, you, you know what punishment will get if you flee. Please don't go. Think, think of your poor team. Think of, and he said, you're considered a hot potato. If you flee, we will get the Courts of Ethics and the Committee of Evidence. And you know, he did pull at my heart. <laughs> I thought about it, and I thought about it, because I had planned to flee two days earlier, but I hung on because of the blame culture, and these good staff members would be in deep trouble. But I couldn't stand it. And I apologized to those who got in big trouble. I did flee. I had my own car, a rented, rented car, I was in Playwater, Flyland Lease. And I took off and checked into the Marriott. I knew that if I got on a, that if I had a flight, they would be chasing me. So I hid out, vowing I would never return to the Flagland base. And all those who write to me, telling me I'll never return to the flag, guess what? I'm one of you.